now we start uh, a new topic which is statistical inference first of all we will learn what is statistical inference and then we will see different statist statistical inference methods so what is statistical inference some of the most important applications of probability theory involve reasoning in the presence of uncertainty so one way for example for the uh, experiments where no uncertainty is involved reasoning is not very difficult because we know the outcome and we can say that if this is the outcome we can uh, we, uh, we can reason the outcome easily but in case of uncertainty uh, we have to do some reasoning and that reasoning for that reason we need some method and that is statistical inference in these applications we analyze the observations of an experiment in order to arrive at a conclusion so in applications where uncertainty prevails first of all we analyze the observation of an experiment and then we make the conclusion when the conclusion is based on the properties of a random of random variables the reasoning is referred to as statistical inference so wherever the random variables are uh, random variables are involved and we have to do uh, reasoning we have to get some con we have to find the conclusion based on reason then we have to apply stati uh, statistical inference in all statistical inference methods there is also a set of possible conclusions and a means of measuring the accuracy of conclusion a statistical inference method assigns a conclusion to each possible outcome of the experiment so since there is uncertainty in the uh, outcome there is also a set of possible conclusions and uh, we need a means of measuring the accuracy of conclusion which conclusion is more accurate because there is a set of possible conclusions and why do we have a set of possible conclusions because there is not one single answer because answer is probabilistic this is this is the prob probability of happening this thing so the conclusions there is no single conclusion as well we have got a set of conclusion uh, possible conclusions and then we have to measure the accuracy of the conclusions so what we do in statistical inference that we assign a conclusion to each possible outcome of the experiment therefore a statistical inference method consists of three steps we have to perform three steps in every statistical inference first we have to perform an experiment then we have to observe the outcome and then we have to state a conclusion the assignment of conclusion to outcomes is based on probability theory as we said over here that we have what's our purpose of a stat statistical inference is that we have to assign a conclusion a conclusion to each possible outcome so the aim of the assignment of conclusions is to achieve the highest possible accuracy when we assign the conclusion to each outcome what we want is that that conclusion must be accurate types of statistical inference for model parameters are point estimation confidence interval estimation and hypothesis testing these are the three types of statistical inferences a probabilistic distribution of a random variable x is completely defined when its parameters of the population are completely known for example in case of uniform distribution the mean mu and variance sigma square should be known in case of poisson distribution rate the arrival rate lambda should be known but in practical situations the distribution to be applied may be known but the parameters like mean and variance may not be known in advance so using statistical inference methods we assert these unknown parameters based on the given data 
what we or what our goal is that we have to ascertain the unknown parameters which are related to that particular distribution which we are applying and the the selection of the distribution is based as we have seen before on the type of experiment usually the model family is specified means the distributions which we apply are binomial poisson normal but the indexing parameters for example the probability in case of binomial uh, distribution poisson mean p the normal variance sigma square might be unknown often the main reasons for collecting data is to estimate from a sample the value of the model parameter or parameters so up to this point what we conclude is that the what we want to do is that we want to assign a conclusion to every outcome and for that we have to apply a distribution a what type of distribution we can may apply may be known but the parameters of those uh, the uh, distribution what uh, the distribution we are applying might not be known so what we have to do we have to estimate those parameters point estimation is the process of using the data available to estimate the unknown value of a parameter so one of the method is to uh, uh, evaluate or get uh, known the value of parameter is using point estimation and point estimation uses the data available whatever the data is available from the experiments we use that data to estimate the uh, parameter using point estimation method so point estimation is the process of using the data available to estimate the unknown value of a parameter when some representative st statistical model has been proposed for the variation observed in some chance phenomenon means where is wherever there is uncertainty first of all what we have to do we have to uh, uh, decide what kind of uh, statistical model can be implemented we have to propose the statistical method means uh, what, by whether it is going to be binomial distribution or poisson distribution or normal distribution according to whether it is discrete probability or continuous probability and after that we have to estimate their parameter values if they are unknown and mostly they are unknown the point estimate obtained from the data will be a single number suppose an experiment is described to count the number of females in each of 100 queues all of length 10 persons means that <clears throat> there are 100 queues and e e and in each queue the maximum number of persons is 10 we have to count the number of females in each queue there are 100 queues of 10 persons and each queue we have to find the number of or count the number of females therefore the number of females in each queue could be zero means there is no female in a queue or all women may be uh, all persons may be female in that case the count will be 10 so it can be zero no female in a queue or 10 all are women the observation is given in the table below suppose this is the observation we have by from experiment this is the observation we have got over here it will, this table shows that for example there are there is just one queue where there is no female means in this queue all the persons are males and there are three queues uh, in which there is only one uh, woman and there are four uh, queues where are two Uh, there are two women and 23 queues having three women 25 queues having four women 19 queues having five women 18 queues have six women five queues have seven women one queue has eight uh, uh, women and also there is one view uh, one queue uh, has nine women and there is no queue which has got all 10 women so there is no queue which has got all 10 women so this is the data given to us now what we can do is that first of all we have to decide what kind of uh, probability distribution we can apply over here as we know as we have seen in case of flipping a coin that 
if you have got only two outcome, possible outcomes like head and tail, we can use apply binomial distribution. We can revise binomial dis, uh, probability or distribution a little bit. The probability of achieving success k in n number of trials is given by binomial prob probability law, where k is the total number of successes and p is the probability of success in a single trial. And we apply this distribution where there are only two possible outcomes. By means two. In case of flipping a coin, there are only two possibilities, a head and tail. If, we are con if there are only men uh, and f male and female in a queue, then again we have got uh, binomial distribution. So what we have to do is we have to find this P. Where the parameter P not known is the underlying proportion of female. So the param parameter p may be estimated from this sample in an intuitive way by calculating total number of females divided by total number of persons in all queues. So total number of females is very easy to find. For example, how many queues have got zero women, how many queues have got one. So we just simply multiply this one, multiply by zero will give you zero, three multiply by one and then four multiplied by two and then all these uh, multiplications and divide it by the total number of persons which is 10 multiplied by 100, 100 which is 1000 so 0.435 so the parameter p the underlying proportion of female is 0.435 in statistical work it is often convenient to denote an estimate of a parameter by adding a circumflex or hat symbol so this hat symbol or circumflex show, uh, tells you that this parameter is estimated. It is not the exact value, but the estimated value. We might write that the water experiment resulted in the estimated mean incidence of leeches mu is equal to 0 0.816. The same notation is also used for an estimator. This mu hat is used for estimated value means estimation and estimator as well. So what is the difference between estimation and estimator? The estimate mu hat is a number obtained from a data, for example like this one over here, while the estimator mu is a random variable expressing an estimating formula. So estimator is the formula which is used to estimate the value. In any given estimation problem, there is not always one clear estimator to use. There may be several possible formulas that could be applied. So now we know that we have to, for example, in this case, we have to, the estimator is mu hat, we have to find the uh, mean value. But to get this mean value, it is not, there are multiple possible uh, values or uh, formulas for this mu hat. Now, to understand this, we go through an example. This example shows that there are three estimates that can be used. The data set is about the annual number of divorces in England and Wales for the six years between 1975 and 1980. So, in 1975, there were 120.5 thousand divorces, and in 1976, 126.7 thousand. If we draw a graph of these values, we will get something like this. This is 1975, we got 120.5, then in 76, it is 126.777, it is 129.1. So if you look at these points over here, it looks, the trend looks very much uh, linear, means it is uh, like a straight line. And it is a positive slope. Our assumption will be that there is a trend line which truly underlies the six points. It has a slope B, say, which can be interpreted as the annual rate of increase of divorces. The number B is a parameter 
whose value we do not know but we wish to estimate one can think of several apparently sensible ways of estimating beta three estimators of beta we might consider are beta 1 the slope of the line joining first and last point p1 and p6 like this one over here this l1 it's joining this this first point in this last point so this is our l1 then we have beta 2 the slope of the line joining midpoints p1 p2 to the midpoints of p5 and p6 and b3 the slope of the line joining the center of gravity of the first three points p1 p2 p3 to the center of gravity of the last three points p4 p5 p6 so other estimate uh, estimators are also possible and different ones are in fact usually preferred but these three will suffice to make the important points the three lines with slopes beta 1 beta 2 and beta beta 3 are shown in figure and are labeled l1 l2 and l3 as we have we can see over here so these are the three possible well uh, straight lines we may have but the thing is that we have to determine which one is the best out of these three so with this data set these three estimating procedures give the following three estimates so what is the first estimate 148.3 minus 120.5 divided by 80 minus 75 very simple we know the value over here is 120.5 initial value and the final value was this one 148.3 so final value minus initial value divided by final value minus initial value from x axis and from so this is you can may say this is y2 minus y1 and this is x2 minus x1 so this gives us 5.6 and uh, in case of these this beta 2 where we have taken two points in, instead of one point as you can see in beta 1 we have taken just two points p1 and p6 but in beta 2 we have taken two points for y uh, 1 y and two points for y2 so what we do is that we, we take just the average of these two points over here so here 138 plus 148.3 divided by 2 and 120.5 plus 120.126.7 divided by 2 and again we take the average over here as well 79.5 and 75.5 and finally we get 5.0 and here we have taken up taken average of three points because here we have taken three points p1 p2 p3 for y1 and p4 p5 and p6 for y2 so we get 6.0 so first estimation is 5.6 beta 1 beta 2 is 5.0 and beta 3 is 6.0 which one of these three estimates should we use is one of them better than the others for that matter what does better mean first of all we have to understand which when we say which one is better so what does the better means over here the word better does not refer to a specific a specific value like 5.6 or 5.0 but the estimating formula which produces such a value here we have to determine the estimating formula which estimating formula will produce such a such a value so we shall need to compare the properties of the various estimators which means that we shall need to compare the properties of the sampling distribution of the estimators in order to make these comparisons we must first decide on a sensible probability model for the data in other words we must decide where randomness enters the situation and how to model that randomness so first of all we have to decide uh, in this in all this experiment where the randomness uh, is there uh, what is the point of random randomness in in this data and then we have to decide the model of randomness means what kind of probability distribution uh, model we have to apply and according to that then we have to 
determine which estimating formula will be the best. For this reason, for this problem, our assumption is that the underlying trend may be modeled as a straight line with equation y is equal to alpha plus beta x, where the parameter beta is the slope we are trying to estimate. So, <coughs> this is a little uh, bit simple uh, estimation problem, and from this straight line we can assume that we uh, we can see that it is a straight trending line going slope is going one slope is positive. So, we can use the uh, straight line equations. Take any particular year such as x 1 is equal to 75. The observed number of divorces in year 75 is 120.5. If the trend model is accurate, then alpha plus beta x1 is equal to alpha plus 75 beta. The difference or error y1 minus alpha plus beta x1 is equal to 120.5 minus alpha plus 75 into beta. Between the observed value and the predict predicted value, this is our predicted value and this is our exact value, can be represented by a single observation on a random variable w. So, the observed points above and below the trend line is measured by simply w1 is equal to 120.5 minus alpha plus 75 beta, w2 is equal to 126.7 minus alpha plus 76 plus beta. So, these are actual values and this is the error. So, how, how far is the uh, this our point on our trend line from this our actual point. So, what we do is that we subtract this value from this one and we get the error. The random variable w has mean 0 and non-zero variance sigma square. If we will take the average of all this, it will give us 0 and uh, the variance is non-zero. The mean is 0 because the sum of positive and negative differences will be 0. So, the difference, if we add the difference of this point, and this point, and this point, says the difference are, differences are positive and negative both. We are not squaring them. So, we will get 0 mean. So, our model for the data set given in this problem is yi is equal to alpha plus beta xi plus wi means the difference between the predicted value and the observed value. There are three parameters for the model alpha, beta and sigma square the values of which are all unknown. Now, this is what we have to do in this statistical inference that we have to uh, estimate these values value of L, as we have to estimate the value of alpha, as estimate the value of beta and sigma square variance. From the estimate, beta 1 is equal to y6 minus y1 and x6 minus x1. This is what already we have done. This is the same thing which we have done over here. It is here it is written in numbers, there it is given in form of variables. So, we get the estimator which is random variable which is very much same as the estimation. So, here this beta 1 is the estimator and here this beta 1 is the estimation. Alpha, beta and xi are constants and wi has 0 mean and variance is equal to 0. The mean of y1 is expected value of yi is equal to alpha plus beta xi balance v, uh, yi is equal to sigma square. The expected value of the estimator beta 1 is given by e is equal to expected value of beta y6 minus y1 divided by x6 minus x1 1 over 
x6 minus x1 into e y6 minus y1. Uh, from algebra, we can say that is the estimated value, uh, value of x6 y6 minus esti estimated value of y1 is same as we subtract y6 minus y1 and then we find the expected values. It is the same thing. So, we can write in place of this uh, is y6 minus e y1. After simplification, and simple algebra, and simple algebra uh, simplification, what we get is beta over here. Similarly, the expected value of the estimator b2, beta 2 is now we have used the same thing which we have done over here. This one, take the average and then divide by this average. So, y5 plus y6 divided by 2 minus y1 plus y2 divided by 2 and x5 plus x6 divided by 2 and x1 plus x2 divided by 2. Same thing. And then after applying simple algebraic, we have taken the LCM over here and then again we have got this e y5 plus y6 minus y1 minus y2 over here. So, we simply replace these values of each y5, y6, y1 and y2 as we did over here. So, what we get alpha plus beta x5 plus alpha plus beta x6 minus alpha minus beta x1 minus alpha minus beta x2 and all these alphas will be cancelled out because of this plus and minus. So, we have left with beta x5 plus beta x6 minus beta x1 minus beta x2. Beta is common. So, we have just taken out beta and then again this x plus 5 plus x minus 1 is cancelled by this one. So, again for estimated beta 2 it is equal to simply beta. And if we do, uh, and if we do the same exercise for beta 3, I think I do not need to explain it again. It is the same thing, simple algebra. And again we get E beta 3 is equal to beta. So, all of the three suggested estimators beta 1, beta 2 and beta 3 have the desi desirable property that they have expectation beta. Each of these estimators is said to be unbiased for beta. So, since all of the three estimators beta 1, beta 2 and beta 3 have the same unknown parameter beta, there is no clue which estimator is better and therefore no indication about how much reliance can be placed on three estimators beta 1 is equal to 5.6, beta 2 is equal to 5.0 and beta 3 is equal to 6.0 for the slope of the underlying trend line. Therefore, we must we test another parameter variance for the three estimators. Now, if we apply the variance, so we do the same ex uh, exercise as we did over here that is variance of y6 minus y1 divided by x6 minus x1 again <coughs> x6 minus x1 square is taken out because we have applied this variance variance of x6 minus x1 this will be as we know that x variance is this square so variance of x6 minus x1 is the uh, square of x6 minus x1 and <coughs> variance of y6 and y minus 1 is uh, sigma square plus sigma square because variance is given as sigma square over here. We have seen this you can see V y i is equal to sigma square. So, we simply replace y V y 6 by sigma square and V y 1 is equal to uh, also by sigma square and we get 2 sigma square over 5 square. Why 5 square? Because we just uh, use the value of x6 minus x1 which is 80, this one x1 is 75, 80 minus 75 is 5, 4 is square and we get 0 0.0800 sigma square. We do the same thing for v, v2 and eventually what we get is that 4 sigma square 
and again we have squared it to just place the values of x5, x6 from the table or graph we have seen before and then we get these values over here and it is 0 0.065 sigma squared and doing the same exercise we get 0 0.07407 sigma square for VB3. So, VB1 variance is 0 0.08, VB2 variance is 0 0.0625 and VB3 is 0 0.07407. So, we can see that VB2 is the smallest, therefore VB2 is the best estimator for V1. So, from this estimator, we have determined that the best, the best slope will be this line, the slope of line joining the midpoints of P1, P2 to the midpoint of P5 and P6.